aneurysms are more common in patients that have multiple family members who have been affected. Most aneurysms actually don't run in families, but there are some families where aneurysms are common. So that if, there, if you have more than two family members affected with an aneurysm, then definitely you should have screening. Um, aneurysms are more common in women and more common in heavy cigarette smokers. Uh, but at this point, we're still not recommending routine screening for people that don't have a strong family history of an aneurysm or who have had another aneurysm, such as um, sometimes patients have an aneurysm that has ruptured and then they need to be checked to make sure they don't develop a new aneurysm down the road. There are some medical conditions, like polycystic kidney disease, that predispose to aneurysm formation, and patients with polycystic kidney disease probably should be screened periodically to make sure that they don't have an intracranial aneurysm. In general, uh, when you find an incidental aneurysm, um, the risk of rupture of that aneurysm averages about 1% per year so that in patients that are found to have an aneurysm, we know from various studies that they have a risk of rupture of about 1% per year. But that varies depending on the size and location of the aneurysm. For example, the average size of ruptured aneurysms that we see is seven millimeters. So aneurysms that are seven millimeters seem to carry that risk of rupture of about 1%. If the aneurysm is smaller than seven millimeters, the risk of rupture goes down very dramatically. So very small aneurysms, less than five millimeters, have a risk of rupture that's usually so low that it doesn't justify the risk of treatment. When you manage patients with unruptured aneurysms, uh, some of the patients are managed with endovascular procedures, um, meaning through a catheter uh, placed in the femoral artery and other patients are managed with an open operation uh, in the skull. And uh, depending on the type of aneurysm, the age of the patient, the health of the patient, the size of the aneurysm, the anatomy of the aneurysm, we would choose between which type of procedure would be appropriate for the patient. Some patients require a fairly significant operation. Some patients require very tiny operations done through a keyhole in the skull with very minimally invasive procedures. So there are a range of procedures for patients with unruptured aneurysms depending on the exact type of aneurysm that the patient has and the uh, issues with the patient uh, themselves.